lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. And here's your host. Miss Kim Robinson. I'm trying to get ready. I'm trying to get ready. To get ready. Yeah, forget it. Sometimes I wonder how long. Can the world continue to stand With brother killing brother No love in this land But the natural truth is Time ain't long God <clears throat> Yes, he is coming back. He is coming back someday. Aren't you glad? Praise the Lord. He is coming back. And you know, we all want to be prepared for that. We all want to be ready when he comes back. You start off by saying yes to Jesus. But the rest of it, if you want to be perfect, God does that to us daily. He polishes us every day until we are 
finally, as we stand before him on those streets of gold, we will be perfect in his sight. Praise God, he loves us the way we are. Once we say yes, he covers our sins with the blood of Jesus, and we are perfect in his sight. Even though we know we aren't perfect inside, we work on that every day, don't we? God will help us to be better each day. Just pray for him to help you. Well, God knows all about you and I, doesn't he? I bet he does. He knows what we're all about, and he knows just what kind of material that you and I are made of. He knows how tough and how weak you and I are, and he he knows our limitations. He knows just what every one of them are. He knows what our fears and our joys and our happiness is. He knows all about it. You know, sometimes we're put to the test. We're usually stronger than we think we are, especially when we have the help of God. And we have his promise in Philippians 4.13 that says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Aren't you glad we have strength in the Lord because we don't have perfect strength in ourselves. We have weaknesses. We have areas where we don't feel like we can accomplish much of anything. We aren't strong against temptation. We aren't strong against sin. We aren't strong against our attitudes and our thoughts. But God, through us, can help us make a better us. And he does each day. You know, you've probably noticed that this life is hard. It's not a secret if you've done any living at all. No matter Who you are, this life is hard. And we need the Lord's strength with every step that we take. Now, there are all kinds of people in this world. There are rich, there are poor, and of course, there's all kinds of people in between the rich and the poor. And I think we, most all of us, fall somewhere in between those two poles. Most of us aren't rich. Most of us aren't real poor. We're somewhere in between. And there are smart people, and you've probably noticed also there are a lot of pretty dumb folks out there too. And there's a lot of people. Most of us fit somewhere in between those two areas. Sometimes we're smart. Sometimes we're pretty dumb. And once in a while we get off the right narrow path and we think, well, that was a dumb move. But God forgives us. Praise God. Now, there are those of us who are saved, and there are those of us who aren't. There are two kinds of people in this world, you might say. There's the saved and the not saved. And there aren't anybody in between. You're not just some saved. You aren't just some of a sinner. You're either a sinner unsaved or you're a sinner that is saved And I don't know about you, but I want to be that sinner that is saved. I want God to be perfecting me. I know I'm not perfect in myself. I'm perfect in his sight as far as my eternity is concerned. But I'm not a perfect person. I never will be. But I try earnestly every day, and God is whacking away at me and polishing me and perfecting me. And someday I might be closer Then I started out, praise God. That's what the Bible says. Now, the world is full of billions of people of all sorts, and I'm not going to talk about all those people. What I'm going to talk about today are the saved ones, you and I out there. And I believe that each one of us saved ones have a spiritual assignment given to us the moment we step forward and say yes to Jesus. The minute we say yes to Jesus as our Savior, I believe he has a plan, a spiritual plan for our lives. Of course, God knows what that assignment is. Sometimes he shares it with us right then. Sometimes he gives us the knowledge right away. And most of the time, I think he doesn't. Most of the time, he decides to guide us just one little step at a time. Because being imperfect, if he told us 
what his final goal was uh, for us in our spiritual life. We would get swollen with pride or we'd run in fear. And God has to change us one step at a time to make us available because we have a lot to change most of us inside of us. In fact, I believe we have two assignments in our lives. We have our life assignment and our spiritual assignment. I think most of us have this main or life assignment as as a wife or a husband, as a mother or father or as a loving son or daughter or as a caring brother or sister or maybe even just as a caring friend. That's an assignment that most of us have, and it's a beautiful thing to be able to help others as a father or a mother, brother or sister or friend. Now let's talk about our spiritual assignments today. Most of God's people don't become pastors, as you know. Most of us don't get to be well-known in the spiritual world. We don't become missionaries to, to Africa or, or some uh, become some famous gospel singer of sorts. Most of us are just normal guys and gals that God uses every day to, to love and care for others, and he uses us to be a good Christian example for others around us. But even so, if you and I aren't or never will become a famous personality in this army of the Lord, we all have a definite purpose and a heavenly assignment to fulfill. And one great thing that I believe God does is that along with that assignment comes God's anointing. Without that anointing, we would have no power. We would be a weakling. His power helps us to change from a weakling to a strong spiritual person. His anointing is something all of us need if we're going to fulfill his assignment, his spiritual assignment that he's given us. Now, when we're doing our best to carry out his assignment, whatever it is, when when that assignment requires more than we have within us, more than we have as a normal guy or gal, then God's anointing steps in, praise God, to give us his strength to perform, his strength to complete that task. There's been many times, many, many times that I could not perform what he has asked me to do without his anointing. Isaiah 40, 31 says, those who wait for the Lord will gain new strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not get tired. They will walk and not become weary. Now, in the natural, there are a lot of times I get too tired to walk. And if I can barely walk, I sure can't run. But I tell you, there are times when you are doing your assignment, your spiritual assignment for the Lord, and he says, we're going to do this. We are going to do this together. He gives you the strength to not only walk when you're weary. He gives you the strength to speed up and run when you're weary. And when it's all done and over, you look back and think, I couldn't have had the strength to do that. I know the Lord was with me. Praise God, he is the one who gives us strength. Just when you think that you've reached the end of your rope, when you think that you've used all the physical or emotional strength that you have, God will step in and he'll give you the strength and the knowledge to do just what he wants you to do. Isn't that wonderful? We should praise the Lord every day us Christians who are in the ministry, when God gives us the strength and the guidance to do what he wants us to do. God's word says in 2 Corinthians 4.1, it says, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, and we shall not lose heart. There are times when God gives me a little bit of a vision into what I will be doing, and it's more than I can contemplate. I'll tell you, it's more than I think my faint heart can take. It's more than I think I can do. It's beyond me, but God gives us the strength. He gives us the strength. We will not faint. 
His power in times of weakness is a true blessing, and it's direct from him. He knows all about us. He knows when we're weak. He knows when to give us strength. It's already on its way before we can say to him, Abba, Father, I just can't do this on my own. He knows. He knows already, and he's got that strength on its way. Just hold on. And when you're called by the Lord to do something that would normally be impossible for you, then you truly know. You know in your heart and your spirit that God is blessing you and he's using you or he's about to. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about myself here and and about my wife. And this may be a big problem with a lot of you. I know it's a lot of problems with a lot of folks in our little ministry, in our little chapel service, bashfulness. Maybe you're bashful and don't like to talk to people. This is a big problem all through the church. And it's the number one excuse for not doing things for the Lord. You may feel that you never have anything of importance to say to anybody around you, but I'll tell you this. If God puts you in a position where someone around you needs you to speak to them or to minister to them or to pray for them, don't hesitate. Don't worry about stumbling through your words. God will give you the strength to say what needs to be said. God can take control of that situation, and you can be a genuine blessing to someone else. If you just stop, take the time, take the risk, let God do the rest. You know, if the thought of talking to some stranger scares you, do it anyway. Be obedient and do it, even if you are scared. You'll discover that when God pushes you to do something, he's going to give you the strength to do it. He wants to stretch you. He wants to stretch you and I. After all, he doesn't want us to stay the way we are. He wants to improve you and I and make us the best that we can be. So if if you were bashful, as I once was, and I still fight that, You won't believe this, but I will tell you from experience, if you start letting God use you to speak, when he says speak, first you will find out that you won't faint. You won't faint from fear. You won't pee your pants. You won't die on the spot. You won't die of fear. You won't have a stroke. God will take care of the situation. If he's asked you to do something, He knows you can do it. He's not a dummy. If he asks you to do it, he knows you and he can do it. So don't say no to him. Don't give in to fear. No, no. After each occasion, you'll find that you really do have conversation in you that that you can share deep inside you somewhere. You'll also discover that the more you allow God to use you, the more you will have great satisfaction deep inside you. I always wanted to, I always hated the fact I couldn't, and I was so fearful. I would run and hide, sometimes literally. I would run across the street to keep from talking to people. I would hide. I'd go to the next room. I'd leave the building. I was so fearful, but God has changed me. There may be times where I'm still fearful, but I know God will meet the situation. He always has and he always will. You'll start wanting God to rescue you from those shackles of bashfulness that have tied you down for all these years. You'll be so glad and gleeful and happy. You'll want more situations for God to find for you. That's the way I found it. and I was so, so, so surprised, first of all, that God even wanted me, wanted to use me to talk to others. This bashful guy... Why would he want me to talk to others? Well, he knew exactly what's inside of me. He knew there was something in here that I could share with others. He knew I could even share this bashfulness experience with others and help them come out of their shell. If God can use me, he can use anybody. I've had these kind of conversations with God like like the following. I, I would say, God... Don't you know just how painfully bashful I am? And and I'd wait for an answer, and then I'd feel in my heart God say, Yes, I 
I guess I do know. And then I'd say to God, don't you know how desperately I want to run and hide when you ask me to talk to someone like this? And then I'd hear him say, yeah, I think I know that too. But I just asked you to do it, didn't I? Then I started seeing how much easier it was each time to talk to others. And then I reasoned with myself, you know, since God was making it easier for me each time, He was leading me to even harder situations. And pretty soon, I wanted harder situations. I didn't want just a simple high. I wanted to share things with people. God gave me things in my heart to share. Things I didn't know were there, but were there all the time. They were just just tongue-tied. They were hidden out of fear. The devil had convinced me I had nothing to give. I had nothing to say, but God changed all that around and let me understand that I can share whatever it is God put inside me. He put it inside me for a reason, not just to hide, not just to value and put a lock on. He wanted me to share it with others, and he wants you to share with others also, whether that's in word or song or written word, or singing, or whatever he gives you. He wants you to share. I knew God was a loving God, and he wasn't doing this to embarrass me. And He he had to have a purpose. He had plans for me, and his plan wasn't to hurt me, and his plan isn't to hurt you. He doesn't want you to be hurt emotionally. I started thinking and, and actually feeling that God was enjoying me coming out of my shell. I knew I was starting to enjoy it. I was enjoying seeing the changes that happened within me, and I was enjoying seeing the things that I could do for the first time in my life. I was enjoying seeing all those fears just melt away. You know, during during those uncomfortable times, I could feel God was actually caressing me and holding me tightly. Whenever I spoke... Even when my knees would shake and my voice would break and sometimes stutter, he was there. He was saying, it's okay, just like my mommy or daddy here on earth would say, it's okay, it's okay, you're going to get through it. Just like any other stages in our life, don't let fear stop you. Well, you know, time passed and God continued to give me more assignments in my life and I gradually changed so that my speaking to others was almost tolerable. God made, gave me a, a brand new surprise. He he opened up a situation where I had to eventually speak in front of a group of people. And it wasn't just a one-time thing. It was a Bible study. How could I say no? People saw me talking to others. They didn't know what bashfulness was inside me. They knew I was quiet, but they didn't know the battle that was going on. So I was asked to do a Bible study, and I said, yeah, I want to grow in that area, Lord. I'm tired of being fearful of the thought of standing in front of people. I secretly wanted to do that without being scared half to death. And at times my knees still shook when I did it. And sometimes I felt like running or calling in sick, but I stuck with it. And when God next asked me to sing in front of others, I at first thought I would simply die on the spot. But I didn't. At first, my wife and I began singing together at a local church Bible study. But we were both so bashful and fearful that all the time we sang, we carefully never looked at the audience to see their expressions, never to look to see the the eyes that were staring back at us, never wanted to see were they thinking they are so bashful, I wish they'd stop. Instead, we just kept on going. We stared at each other's eyes through the whole song. We encouraged each other, and we didn't faint. That was quite an experience until now we sing in front of others and it doesn't bother us. Once in a while we have butterflies, but God uses us. And I'm so thrilled, so thrilled that God is using this bashful fella and my bashful wife 
to minister to others, and he can do the same for you. Amen. Anyway, that's the way I began, doing what the Lord would have me do. And it was a long journey, and that journey isn't finished yet. I'm sure I, I still have painful times, but I am so grateful that the Lord for allowing me, of all people, to serve him. What a wonderful God we have. What an amazing God. He can take anything. He can take anyone, any one of you out there, and use you. He can use any of us. He can take anyone and reshape them. He can mold them into what he wants them to be. You know, if we can do that for this, if he can do that for this bashful boy, if he can do it for any of you, he can do it for anyone. Just follow him. Take that assignment he's given you and run with it and not get weary. You know, with God, God knows you're fearful. You see, fear is okay if you fight through it with the Lord. He will bring you through it, all of it. So just keep moving forward no matter what happens. Just allow God to give you his anointing, his anointing, his power, his strength. Lean on that. Lean on the Lord when you need it. When your power and your inner strength is coming to an end, call on the Lord to give you his strength and his anointing to carry you through. God's strength is ever-present in our times of need. That's what the Word says. You know, life is hard for all of us, no matter who we are. We're often called to go through Something that we think we could never go through. We think we're we know our limitations better than anyone else, but we probably do as far as this world is concerned. We know better than anyone else, but God knows our limitations better than we do. Plus, He knows tomorrow, and He knows how He can change us and prepare us for that unknown future. And as we go through this life, we will all come to times where we're tested not just with speaking in front of folks, but there's testing for us Christians and those Christians of us who are in ministry. There's testing every day. We each come up against a problem or a situation in our lives where we don't think we can go on, on our own power. We feel like we might faint, drop in a heap on a floor. We might say, I give up. Because we have a lack of courage, a personal courage. But life goes on, especially our life with the Lord, our assignment with the Lord. And as Christians, our life with the Master goes on. In fact, our life with God will never end. We have started an adventure with the Lord, which will never end. He will always be part of our lives, either here or in eternity. He will always be in the picture picking up the pieces of our lives and helping us to prepare, to help us go through that next chapter of our lives, no matter what it is. Now, like I said at the beginning, we all fight our way through this difficult life. None of us are immune to problems. Whether you're wealthy or poor, whether you're well-known or not, whether you're a pessimist or an optimist, troubles and trials and problems come to all of us. You're probably going through something today, something you haven't even shared with anyone else. God knows. Lean on him. Know that he is looking ahead of your problem. Don't hesitate to lean on him and ask for his anointing. He will help you through the smallest detail. He'll help you through the biggest problems. You know, as Christians, we may feel at times like we're just a magnet problems and troubles and persecution and we are after all we we have an adversary who wants us all to fail it's his number one goal for us he doesn't want us to succeed in anything we do especially in the ministry but praise the lord god loves us and wants us to succeed and we find ourselves fighting a constant battle somewhere in between in between god and darkness constantly We're like a ping pong ball going from one end of the table to the next. We're with God, we're fighting the devil. We're with God, we're fighting the devil. 
we find ourselves standing between two hills, if you can imagine this in your in your mind's eye. We stand between two hills with the army of the Lord standing and cheering for us on one hilltop behind us as we face an army of Satan standing on the other hill. He's cursing us and tempting us with every foul thing he and his followers can think of. Our job as Christians is to ignore the army that's all dressed in black and to call out to the God of creation to give us strength. Call out to God to give us daily courage and wisdom and guidance and ask him to give us every opportunity to serve him. Don't pay any attention to the cursing and the yelling coming from that satanic hill. When the going gets rough, call out to God. When you feel weak, call out for his strength. When you lack wisdom, ask for his. When, you, when he gives you guidance, when he shows you what your assignment is, gladly take hold of it, no matter how it scares you. And with his power and strength and guidance, move forward. Just keep on doing the best you can with what he has shown you to do. He will steady those knees that keep on knocking. He will keep you from having the urge to run and hide. He'll give you wisdom, his wisdom. He'll give you the right words to speak. He'll give you the strength when you're weak. And with his strength, you can defeat all the giants that come after you. That Goliath that's trying to defeat you today, he will go down before you, a defeated foe. You won't need a sling like David used. You won't need three smooth stones like David had that day. All you need is a knowledge to cry out to the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Call out to your Abba Father, your Daddy who loves you with all of his heart. He loves you more than anything or anybody has ever or ever will. In his word in Ephesians 3.16, God tells us that he would grant you according to the riches of glory to be strengthened with might from his spirit into your inner man. Your inner man may be screaming out, I'm afraid. God hears that scream. God will calm you down with his Holy Spirit and give you his anointing and give you the strength to not only stand there but to walk and then to run towards the enemy not afraid of anything that stands in your way. He will be there right for you when you need him. And when the devil or the situations of life are trying to defeat or discourage you once again, what you need to do is to train your heart and your spirit to say within or even out loud sometimes, if you're alone in the car with a group, don't care what anybody says, just tell that old devil, it ain't going to be more than I can stand. You just go right ahead. It's going to take more than that to defeat me and the Lord. You tell that old devil where to go. You tell him in whose authority you speak, and you tell him with whose authority you go forward. God is with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. He is on your side. And with him at your side, who can defeat you? For the Lord, he will not be moved. He will not be defeated. And with you, security in his caress, God will not let you be defeated. Not this day. Not any day. Keep moving forward with him. Until next time, this is Pastor Jim Hampton saying, God bless you and keep moving forward.
times I know I haven't acted my best You gave me, but you forgave me you. 